Mark Shire and I are going to go through the captain's guide. If you are uh, joining in with us and you are not a captain, you don't have to stay, obviously. Uh, but if you are a captain, we would love to have you stay and uh, read through this with us. This is uh, this is going to be our our quote unquote captain's meeting uh, for the preseason with season starting in about a little over a week from now. Um, but there's some stuff we want to talk about. Veteran captains, this is a lot of this is not going to be new to you. Um, this is going to be retreading old ground. But for new captains, hopefully this is beneficial, uh, and hopefully we can answer some questions. And if you have any questions throughout this, uh, feel free to ask them in the Twitch chat, and Mark Shire will read them off because I have uh, display capture on. I don't want to pull up slobs in the middle of this. <coughs> Also apologize for the skinniness of the document and the wideness of the screen, but I have a curved monitor, so we're we're just going with what we got. Uh, yeah, it's got, it probably looks a little funky monitors. to some people or all the people. Um, could you zoom in with Google uh, Docs though, possibly, yeah. or maybe just yeah. like I think I can. I think I could okay. possibly do that if I can. Might right, make it a step. Slightly it's a step. I just gotta remember how to do that. There. We'll see. Uh -huh. Okay, there we I'll go. assume it's zoomed big. in. Alright. It's not updated yet. Nice, nice. So, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're going to not just read through this word for word. Um, we're not going to make this a high school PowerPoint presentation. But uh, we're going <laughs> to gonna talk about each different thing. And Markshire has some, some spots where he wants to really kind of hit, hit home on. And I have some spots I really want to hit home on. Um, and we'll have some follow-up stuff. This, this whole video is going to be... Uh, saved, recorded, and posted afterwards as well, because I know we don't have uh, as many people as we would like due to the holidays. But hopefully, each captain can get to it at some point. Uh, but the, we we decided to create this guide in the off season to to have, be like a permanent staple for THL to help out, especially new captains coming in with with different things that we thought of that would have been beneficial to us when we were captaining at the start. And also just basic uh, information that you might want to look back on if you don't want to sift through the rules. You just need a kind of a quick, quick answer for a quick question that you might have instead of contacting someone from the board or digging through our rules. Um, but to start off, our, our expectations that we have for all of our captains, this one's got to kind of be read word for word, but uh, we want each captain to create a fun and friendly environment for their players. So we don't want, we, uh, we want you guys to, hopefully take it seriously um, because everybody is here to win even if you're you're doing a late back team but at the same time we don't we don't want players uh, feel like they're being punished if they're losing or uh, uh, we don't want them to the hate their lives when they run into your discord um, we, we expect you uh, and also your players to know the THO rules and guidelines um, so it is very important as a captain for you to know the rules or to at least have the rules and the spot in your discord or just on your own hands uh, that you can access pretty easily. So if a question does arise, you can get that answer pretty quickly. We don't want a bunch of issues where uh, your players or yourself are running into issues where it could have been solved quickly just by knowing a very simple rule that's been there for some time. Um, communicate clearly and promptly about any issues that arise with your team and with your players. Uh, so we talked about this a little bit in the off season. Uh, we want a little bit more responsibility to fall into the captains, whatever, whenever your players are, uh, acting out of line within, within our official THL discord. Um, if, if an issue does arise where one of your players is, Causing problems, um, whether that be with other players or with with mods or with the board, um, we we do want you to to kind of step in. Maybe I'm probably just in private and just say, hey, you know, tone it down a little bit. They they are representing your team in a way because when we look at them, we do look at them as your player. Um, so we do want you to have have a little more responsibility with with your players. Um, and lastly, we want 
we definitely want, and this is very important for us, to ensure that all of your players abide by our deadlines, and we want to avoid DQs as much as we possibly can. Um, I know Mark Shire talked about, talked about that when we were making this. Uh, deadlines are, are huge for us, um, especially DQs. If we could have a season with no DQs, you know how tremendous that would be. Yeah. Um, so first of all, I would say try to see if you can zoom in maybe one or two more times because right. it's still slightly hard to see. Um, yeah. Basically, I'm like going off of what Mako said. Um, I think like so the thing is like everyone should read the rules, but also if you're really going to zero in on something to read, please read the in match process document because probably the majority of the questions that we get are just someone saying hey one of my players like queued the wrong deck what did they do and it's not a huge deal for us to like just answer those questions in discord all the time but these things are all explained in the rules i think they're explained pretty clearly if anything is unclear in the rules um please let me know or please let a board member know but really just knowing the in match process document means means that if an issue arises and um a player comes to you as the captain, uh, a lot of the times you can just in the rules and just tell them immediately what they should do. If you want to confirm it in Discord, that's okay too. But just even having that idea, being able to tell them, hey, this is a screenshot of the place on the rules document, you know, if you like didn't bring a ban or if your opponent was late or if you like you, the, this is what you should do. Um, that just with just things being efficient and the board or the mods not having to be called for like everything that uh, is a and then also with communication uh i think uh, pretty much all of the issues that we have with captains specifically are captains that just end up not communicating promptly and we have things where like their players will be um, like in the past, DQing for class submissions, or just uh, we just don't really receive communications from their players for scheduling until like past Wednesday or like very late on Wednesday. And if the captain can get ahead of that just by communicating both with their team, and then if their player brings something up, or if someone on an opposing team brings something up, just trying to uh update all parties involved on either email or discord as soon as possible that helps out a ton with preventing issues from arising um especially because our deadlines for a lot are that wednesday of the week and uh when things get really tight with that that's when we see dqs happen which we want to avoid uh so matt did say would a flow chart on the website or something help I'm not sure exact a flow chart for what exactly at a time in the past for like the in match. So for like in match issues, we thought about making a flow chart. I just kind of ended up not doing that because I didn't have time. But if I have time this next year, I might start working on a project. I might have to get people to help me with that. Um, but I will see. I will make a note of that and think about that. I think that definitely could help with in match. Yeah. Um, so, when it to kind of getting into like the more detailed stuff. Um, so, I, if you look on the left side here, we have uh, the the outline for this this whole doc, um, and it starts it starts off with more um, varied things. Uh, but when we get we get lower, it starts to get a lot more detailed. So, first off, this is. This is more so for for newer captains, but setting your own expectations. Um, we we don't want to tell you how to how to run things, um, but at the same time, um, it's it's very important for you to tell all your players at the start what kind of environment you want to be running within your team. Um, if if you have a player who's very laid back and doesn't do a whole lot of prep, and you sign them to your roster, but you want to you want to go gung ho this season, and you want to um, you want to you want to win the championship for sure. You want to prep every week. You want everyone to you want everyone to be prepping on their own as well as with the team. And you sign this player who's not used to that. You you really need to set these expectations early, um, because otherwise you're going to be running into internal issues, and those might end up creating issues outside of your own team. And we really want to avoid that. Um, 
when it comes to new players, uh, we did get a, a decent amount of new players this, this off season. Um, so especially at the beginning of this season, it's, it's going to be very important to be patient with them. Um, because a lot of them are coming into THL and they're not, they're not used to structures like this. Um, so it's, it's gotta be very, very important whenever you get to this, uh, or whenever you, this season starts that you, you kind of give them a little leeway when it comes to these, these, these new ideas that are being thrown at them when it comes to <laughs> communication deadlines and being, being interactive when it comes to prepping. I know when I first started, I, I never prepped a thing in my life. So, uh, it's, it's going to be kind of, it's going to be a kind of important for you to kind of lay this out for them and say, Hey, this is how we're going to do things around here. This is what I expect of you. This is what your teammates are going to expect of you. Um, and at bullet point two says having a kickoff meeting can solve like almost all these issues in uh, about 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, I think you cut up slightly at the end there, but yeah, also just like, I mean, hopefully you'll have maybe interviewed people before they join your team not that that's something that you have to do but that's something a lot of teams do but just have like talked with the different members of their team to get a sense for who they are as players and what they ex expect and that can help like you shape your personal expectations and this doesn't have to be like a super official thing like you draw something up like this is what we do it can just be as simple as saying like hey guys like just we are tr like our our goal as a team is to win the championship. We want to be prepping every week. Um, I expect you guys to like have done like this on your classes or this on like your potential deck lists. Like some teams will do that or some teams like it'll just be accepted that we're just there to be on a team just to play Hearthstone and have fun and prep isn't as big as an issue. But just making sure you, you understand that team identity and everyone is on the same page. Yeah, basically just just lay things out for your, your team and your players at the start. So no one's surprised halfway through the season when you're getting angry at them because they're not prepping as much as you would like them to. Yeah. Yep. Um, so our third bullet point is suggestions that we have for new captains. Um, if you're an old, older captain or experienced captain, uh, some of this is probably not, not new to you, but, uh, for new captains, this is all very important that we think it's very important. Um, start off, create a discord for your team. I feel like, I feel like this is a pretty obvious suggestion, uh, but some people may want to just do their team through like a private Discord chat, you know? Uh, so make sure you get a Discord for your team going. It just makes things so much easier. Um, set expectations, we just talked about that. Uh, teach your players how to correctly email opponents and create ban and deck screens. So. <laughs> This is something that we won't talk about very much because um, Donde is creating a video on how to correctly set these and we'll have it posted in this little empty slot where it says video right here. So you can watch it or show it to your players, suggested show it to your players. Um, but our hat wanted to throw in practicing a band with each player. If you have new players, please, so we can avoid the D those DQs, please, go into a challenge screen with them and just practice a band with them. Practice it. And we don't want to run into issues with new players where the the other the opposing player has to decide this guy's new. Do I be lenient or not? Do I what do I do? Let's just just practice one with your with your player. It takes like less than five minutes. Um make sure all your players read the rules. Very important. Um and build a rapport with your players. So New captain, um, if you may be even only been in the league for in the <clears throat> organization for like one one season, so you might not have the best rapport with with the community because you're new, not as many people know you. Um, so definitely, it's it's very important to set aside time with your team, whether that's to play uh, together on ladder, to scrimming against each other, just talk lineups, just talk in general, play Jackbox, whatever it is you guys like to do. It it there's a huge difference you'll notice between teams that communicate a lot and between teams that don't communicate a lot because 
the teams that communicate a lot, they I've seen have a lot more success and their players have a lot more fun. And you see players on these teams sticking around with those captains for a lot longer. And those teams that don't communicate very much outside of maybe a couple of people, those teams end up breaking up after the end of the season. Players go elsewhere um, and they just don't thoroughly enjoy their time. Um, <clears throat> create a channel for each player in, the dis in your Discord. It makes things a lot easier. Uh, that's less of a rapport thing and more of just ease and suggestion for you. Um, it just makes it easier for you guys to talk about, hey, this is my three seed, whoever that may be. This is their matchup. It's, everything's going to be different for each seed. So it just make th makes things more streamlined for you and your team. Um, deadlines and scheduling. Um, I can't underestimate enough the power of a scheduling channel and being organized within it. Um, I send, I send one of these out. This is an example of a scheduling channel for my legacy team from last season. Um, uh, every single week I made one of these, I organized it the best of my ability. Um, and I sent it out every single Monday if I could. And then all of my players typed in what, when they were playing their matches right after it, um, and it just helped us keep organized. It's It was important for us to keep, show our matches when they were going to be played because we could hold each other accountable. Um, I think, I don't know if we had a single DQ. If we, if we did, my bad. But <laughs> but uh, it wasn't my fault. I'll say that. Um, I did everything I could. Um, but things like these help keep your team and uh, helps you to keep your team accountable when it comes to uh, when it comes to having your matches played. You, if 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 it's three thirty Eastern Tuesday and Booze is not online, uh, I can ping the heck out of him. I can say I have a Snapchat. I can send him Snapchats. I can say mm. where the heck are you at because I know exactly when his match is supposed to be. So things like these help to keep your team accountable. Um, the other thing, oh, uh, make a channel for future schedule conflicts. So if if Ooh, it's an nice. unused channel, probably for most of the season, but when it comes in handy, it comes in handy. Because if you're if your four seed's gonna be on vacation in in February, and you know about it in January because he posted about it like two weeks ago, then you can get that sub planned like weeks ahead of time and you could have that person in your Discord. You don't have to be scrambling the week of. You anything to add in uh in this section? Um not a ton, although I you know that's interesting. Like no team I've been a part of has had one for future future schedule conflicts. Yeah, but me I really neither. like that. Our hat yeah. added that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice, nice. Yeah, just I mean that's just it's another way like usually if people have like things in advance at least if i have something i know is far in advanced i'll just tell my captain like hey and in, in i won't be able to play for like most of the week so you should probably find a sub but that's that's a super good idea um, one thing i would say is like you don't like these are all suggestions so like if you don't want to have a team that is like really try hard and prep focus you know you don't set aside time to like play together personally on ladder like some teams are just like never in voice together but are still super active just over discord and text or like some other format and they still end up being uh having a really good team environment but i would definitely say just the more time you spend over voice or just chatting over text about whatever with your team you're going to have a better team environment and when you enjoy the environment they are going to in invest the time in and are going to actually care about playing their matches and will avoid DQs, which just makes everyone happy. Um, and then definitely if you have anyone on the team who it's their first season and or if it's their first season, like maybe they've played like pro or something and they're not familiar with the open class format, please go over like the full band process with them just a quick run through before their first match because we just have just every season we end up having like week one dqs of new players who also had new captains or sometimes veteran captains who didn't go over that um and, and it can just be really easily avoided so i would especially pay attention to that and uh, like mako said in the next week we should have a video uh 
just explain like a short three to four minute video explaining how to do uh, those those band screens so uh yeah yeah um so now into like the uh the more rules focus areas inactive players so this this is something that you might run into you might not um uh, but it, it's definitely something to think about so at the beginning of your season it's it's this first bullet point's all about again setting expectations um and part of those expectations might if you if you're running a very like uh, a a very oh, i don't know what the word i'm looking for um hard hitting like prep prep prep, prep or... like okay. serious team and someone's yeah. not taking it as seriously you might consider that person as inactive um because sort they're like not a, prepping maybe with you BYC and stuff like team, that someone said huh i said a bbyc type team but uh, <laughs> never mind <laughs> ouch uh so yeah. <laughs> dude don't do don't do mmi like that um uh, so okay. so some i mean you might consider that person inactive but they're actually not inactive and that's a very important distinguish uh, distinguishment to have uh, because there's a difference between an inactive player and an unresponsive player um, now you can't punish somebody for being inactive in the case that they're not doing everything you want them to do um, you can't just kick them off your team because they're not prepping as much with you um, you can't you can't bench them because they're i don't know they're 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 not taking your suggestions um, that might be considered inactive to you but at the same time if that person's not dqing and they're playing their matches every week um i that's that's a completely different situation um whereas there you might run into a you might run into a situation where you have an unresponsive player um, and that's a whole other wheelhouse. So I would categorize an unresponsive player as someone who's not responding to your messages in Discord or they're missing their deadlines consistently, they're getting DQ'd consistently, um, someone who's, who's not really there anymore. Um, and at that case, there's some things you might want to look into. Um, the one thing I would definitely look into if you have someone who's being unresponsive, um, first talk to your team, um, because you, you don't want to just kind of take over the situation unless this is an emergency. Um, but I would definitely talk to your team that goes along with that rep good rapport with your team. Um, and you might want to look into permanently replacing this person if they're, they're missing these deadlines and there's getting DQs. So if you're going to permanently replace them, um, I do have it rolled out right here. If you're going to permanently replace them, um, per replacement can have PR equal to or less than the player being replaced or have PR less than or equal to the PR cap of 1,800. Um, but again, I would highly suggest you <clears throat> you look into talking to your team before you do this um, because it is a teammate um, and you also should probably try contacting them and tell them the situation about how you're thinking about replacing them because you do never know it might be some in real life situation that's that's hit them hard and they've they might just need substituted out for a couple of weeks um yeah do you think having the yeah. to these yeah i would just say it's it's good to just proactively communicate if you can with a lot of these things like usually i wouldn't suggest like just kicking someone off after maybe one dq like maybe they have some legitimate reason but like if someone if it's clear they're you know not being responsive if they've like dq'd multiple times even after the first dq i think it's fair to just sit down and have a talk with the person like hey you know we really bad for the team when we dq we don't want that if you dq i i'm gonna have to remove you from the team um and we also have have i think might get into this like later in the guy i don't know uh got put in but we have like suspensions uh just like built into the rules for people who dq a certain number of times within like a period of two seasons so that just might uh, take effect anyways 
Um, but that and also just if you have an issue where you think you're going to have to replace a player, uh, try to proactively communicate with the other team's captain. And also if you're having a chronic issue like this, um, because the board can work with you too and just um, usually facilitate moving uh, smoothly. Yes. Um, so following along with that uh, is DQs. Um, so we we you didn't as a captain, um, it's it's very important to think about. Um, there are situations that will arise that might cause a player to DQ um, that's out of their control, um, and it's it's important to be lenient, especially if you want to maintain a, a healthy team environment or a, just a friendly team environment in general. Um, but uh, whenever you have a player that's consistently DQing. We do have rules set in place that you need to be aware of. Um, so if if you have a player that does DQ twice um, over the combined period of this current the current season that you're on and the previous year, season across all series, um, they they'll be given a written warning through us, um, and then they will be put on probation. Um, if that person DQs during their probational period then they will be suspended for the, the following six weeks in all three series that they may be playing in. Um, so we, we do take these seriously because we one of our most important ideals is getting matches played. Um, so if, if we have a player consistently going against this and consistently causing DQs, um, then, then we do have to take some action. Anything? Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, not much to add about that. Yep. Pretty self-explanatory, and all the stuff about, like, full rules about DQs can be found in the rules. Yep. Um, which I don't think I've... No. I don't think I've linked the rules in this doc. Oh. I should probably do that. Um, uh, yeah, I can, yeah. Okay. Um, substitutes. So... If you have a player that you know is going to miss, so especially if you if you have someone who's going to be on vacation um, and they told you ahead of time, or or they they just they're swamped this week and they need they need someone to play for them, um, you have until Wednesday uh, at 11:59 PST, which is three o'clock uh, THL Standard Time or Eastern Standard Time, um, <laughs> and. You can sub that player out for someone else who is a who is not on a team. Uh, that player needs to, must have a PR of equal or lesser than the player that is being subbed out. So if if um, if Mark Shire can't play this week and he's got 350 PR, then uh, I can't sub in our hat who's got 355 PR because that's above 350. Um, and when it comes to emergencies, if you do have someone who, who it's like, it's past Wednesday, let's say it's like Saturday night and they're playing their match at eight and they're stuck in traffic, they're not going to make it home, their opponent can't play tomorrow. So you need to, you need to find a sub. It's an emergency. You can do that. Um, the only stipulations we have with emergency subs, um, are that you can only, a player can only be emergency subbed out um, once per season per series. So if if Mark Shire is subbed out in Hero Series for an emergency sub, then he can't be he can't be emergency subbed out again in Hero Series uh, throughout this season. And the same PR rules apply with emergency subs. The only other difference is that person subbing in has to play the classes that were. Um, that were submitted for the original player. So if Mark Shire submitted Druid Hunter, Paladin, Warlock, then the person subbing in has to play those classes too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in in terms of like finding subs, I would say just tell all your players, hey, if you think you can't play during a given week, tell me as soon as possible, and then uh, post in the discord like as soon as you can i need a sub for this week and just make sure you include the pr requirements and then also on the website you should be able to find all the people that aren't signed and once we actually get like full rosters out 
that will definitely be up to date in the players tab for each series. You can see who's registered for a given series, but is not signed to a team. And they, if they are within PR requirements that you need for a sub, uh, get their contact info there. Yep. All right. Almost done. Uh, mock emails. So we, uh, we, this is posted elsewhere on our websites. Um, I don't remember where it was at. The best practices for scheduling, I think, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is under resources. Could also yeah. link that. Yeah. So I, well, I just copy and pasted the email from in there. Yeah. Um, but this is something that you might want to go over with your players. Um, I, I know I've ran into issues in the past, and I know I've been the culprit of this issue too in the past of sending short, choppy emails <laughs> because I'm in a hurry. Um, but when it comes to emailing, uh, it can make the difference between uh, a, a scheduling confusion and uh, potentially a match not even getting played because uh, you you didn't say that you were. Let's say that you typed Eastern Standard Time because you, for some reason, thought that your state was still in Eastern Standard Time when they were in Eastern Daylight Savings Time. And everybody is telling you this. Um, and then you're playing someone from overseas who doesn't use those time zones. So they Google Eastern Standard Time, do the conversion, they show up for their match, but it's an hour off, and you're not there, they put in a DQ or vice versa. Then we run into a bunch of issues. So it's very important when you're doing these emails and you're contacting your opponents for the first time for a week um, that you throw out as much information as you possibly can. So there is a mock email here on this doc as well. Um, so some important things to point out in this email. Um, every single day of the week is posted here, except for Monday, because this would have been sent on the Monday. Um, Mark Shire told our hat uh, all the times he could play. He told him what, uh, what time zone he was in, so our hat would know. Um, he told him what days he wasn't available. He basically gave him as much information as he possibly could. The other important thing to note is that it's very readable and legible, and it doesn't take three glances to figure out what's going on. Um, so it might be a yes. good idea to go over with your players, hey, this is what a good email looks like. You could literally even just copy and paste this into a Google, into your Gmail, and then just change the numbers and change the words or the the names and then just send it off like no one's gonna blame you for just copying and pasting this email format mm -hmm. actually yeah. we prefer it if you did copy and paste this email format yeah and i mean this is like this is really all you need just the time zone the times on each day and it's very clearly readable um yeah pretty much that you could even take this email just take out like the times that are written here post this in your team discord and say hey this is i'd like you guys to use this uh let, let me know if you have any questions yep make it fill in the blank um last section is our frequently asked questions so there are some questions that we thought of oh i did post the rules never mind so where can you find the rules rules more detailed um, more wordy, uh, you can find them here. You just click and go to the doc. Um, when do you need to get the board involved? Uh, so when it comes to getting the board involved, you you should probably only get the board involved in situations that can't be solved by consulting the rules. So take a look at the rules. If you can't find your answer in the rules, go ahead and get us involved. Um, otherwise, Try and see if you can get your question answered just by using the documents that we've given you. Um, if you need to get in contact with us, what email should you email? Uh, help at teamhearthlegends.com. Um, it has been changed from help at teamhearthleague.com. So do try and email help at teamhearthlegends.com for questions. And then last thing before we go, do I have to go through email or can I go through Discord? It really depends. Um, if you want to, if you want to get the best route to get in contact with us is definitely through email because through email, all five of us get to see what you're asking about. 
and you, you're basically reaching five people at once through the email. Um, I mean, I know I have my, my emails connected to my phone, so it's basically the same thing as pinging me on Discord. Um, mm -hmm. And then if it's an emergency situation, I'm contacting someone, one of the board members on Discord is probably going to be good um, because... I, I, I mean, I, not everybody has it connected to their phone, and sometimes the emails don't get notified to me, but I always get the Discords, and Discord's just quicker. So if something comes up immediately and you need an answer quick, Discord's probably best. Um, and if it's a Discord issue, like something's going on inside the Discord, you can always contact a mod, because we do have mods as well. You don't have to ping us. There's other people there to help. Yep. Um... Yeah, I mean, it's still, like, it's really tempting. I do quickly, I just send them a message on Discord. But if you're asking, like, a question or you have a request of the board, just, like, messaging one of us is going to be less efficient because if it's something that isn't just, like, a very quick thing, like, if it's something that needs to be brought to the board, like, I get it, I will say, in our board server, hey, I got a DM from this person who asked us to do, what do you guys think, and then we'll discuss it but if you to the email then everyone can see it on the email on their own time and just all the information it like if there are any like files or something that gets attacked that's just so it just ends up working out a lot better yeah that way and and we should probably yeah. definitely note too as far as like um dqs and um substitutes and stuff all those should be going through the email none of those should be going through discord oh yes definitely uh, yeah, good call. Um, I mean, yeah, we have subs, and then for DQ, um, just all have, have to review that. Like, if there's any DQ, there's going to be screenshot evidence, so just so we can all see it. Um, I guess we can. I don't actually think we have a ton of chat wants to ask a question. And yeah, does anyone have any questions? Um. I, yeah. I, if there's no questions, we're gonna we're gonna shut it off and we'll uh, we'll post the video so other people who couldn't make it. I know there's a lot that couldn't make it tonight um, can watch and ask questions. Or if you don't have questions and you might later, you can always just ask in in the the captain's channel. Yep. All right, we can hang out for like another minute or so i guess Let's see <laughs> yeah and then, then, like, and then you can just cut something? this part yeah <laughs> uh no <laughs> uh let's see yeah, i will put in the uh best practices for scheduling in here somewhere because uh i would uh i would put it right here under where can i find the rules right at that bullet point oh yes best although i just made an entirely new page for two lines by doing that wow okay maybe, maybe we shouldn't do I, I we can reformat it. Right. We just need the yeah. one line somewhere. We'll find it. Or we everything uh, one point less and fun. There we that go. Oh, we just made our there line. <sighs> okay, <laughs> hold on. Well, uh, we can take some. Email. Let's see, no, we'll we'll figure. I've done this in English class. I've never gone the reverse <laughs> way. <laughs> Here, I'll make this screenshot. So, um. Cool. All right, I think we can call it. Um, we'll have this posted, so if you need to go back or look at anything or you have questions, whatever you can do so. But otherwise, um, thanks for watching our captain's guide. Um, if you have any questions, hit us up, and that's it. See you later.